5, verse 6, it says, Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? And that is what we ask you right now, Lord. Restore us to the joy of our salvation. Pour your Holy Spirit on us. Bring us back to life so that we may be the people you formed for your praise.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are forgiven. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of confession we bring before you. Together we pray. Gracious Lord, we confess that we have not feared, loved, and trusted in you above all things. We have allowed other things to distract us from your presence in our homes and your mission in our lives. We have not extended your saving love to others as we ought, choosing to keep your good blessings to ourselves instead of sharing them with those around us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Grant us the Spirit of Jesus, who cleanses us from our sin, that we may worship you with joyful hearts and proclaim your kingdom all our days. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. This kingdom has come near to you in Christ, and you are blessed to be a part of his mission and ministry. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, it is my joy to proclaim Jesus' words of peace to you, and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Continue to send your messengers to preserve your people in true peace, that by the preaching of your word, your church may be kept free from all harm and danger. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our Old Testament reading for this morning is from the prophet Isaiah, the 66th chapter. Rejoice with Jerusalem, and be glad for her, all you who love her. Rejoice with her in joy, all you who mourn over her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast, that you may drink deeply with delight from her glorious abundance. For thus says the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the nations like an overflowing stream. And you shall nurse, you shall be carried upon her hip, and bounced upon her knees. As one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see, and your heart shall rejoice. Your bones shall flourish like the grass, and the hand of the Lord shall be known to his servants and he shall show his indignation against his enemies. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue our worship with Psalm 66. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard, who has kept our soul among the living and has not let our feet slip. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies come cringing to you. All the earth worships you and sings praises to you. They sing praises to your name. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds toward the children of man. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the river on foot. There who rules by his might forever, whose eyes keep watch on the nations. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard, who has kept our soul among the living and has not let our feet slip. Our epistle lesson is from Paul's letter to the Galatians, sixth chapter. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual, should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone, and not in his neighbor. For each will have to bear his own load. One who has taught the word must share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. But far be it from me to boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. For neither circumcision counts for anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. And as for all who walk by this rule, Peace and mercy be upon them, and upon the Israel of God. From now on, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand for the reading of our Holy Gospel. Alleluia. Peace be to this house. The kingdom of God has come here to you. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. 
After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to go. And he said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I am sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide, for the laborer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in it and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not receive you, go into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more bearable in the judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You shall be brought down to Hades. The one who hears you hears me, and the one who rejects you rejects me, and the one who rejects me rejects him who sent me. The seventy-two returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated.
God our Father and Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our message this morning is the epistle lesson from Paul's letter to the Galatians. And I'd like to focus on verse 7 where it says, A person reaps what he or she sows. And the reason I've singled out this verse is because I want us to give this verse some serious thought. You know, when I look at the behavior and choices of some people around me, it's quite evident that they disregard the truism of verse 7 here. And this really stems from their belief that they won't ultimately be held accountable before God. So for them, it doesn't really matter what they sow. There won't be any serious consequences to uh, deal with. Now, they may be cognizant of some of the consequences in this life for making bad choices. You know, for example, they realize that if they speed and they get caught, they may reap uh, a fine or a ticket. If they assault someone, they may reap a prison sentence. But on a grander scale, they really don't give this sowing and reaping thing very much thought. I think many people today believe that they can get away with the bad choices they make without repenting. And that partially explains why people sow bad choices. Some, of course, just don't care. You know, they're not at all concerned about the consequences. But I think most people believe that they'll get away with the bad choices that they sow in life. And this is particularly true when it comes to spiritual matters. You know, many people are truly convinced that a relationship with God just isn't important, or living their life for Him isn't necessary. And they truly believe that there won't be any consequences to face for this. They're betting that they won't reap anything bad for the bad that they have sown in this life. They're sure that they won't have to answer before God Almighty. Well, this is where many people are at in their thinking today. You know, if they really believe that what they sow is what they'll reap in spiritual matters, they would act much, much differently. But most believe that being a good person, according to how they define being a good person, is all that is needed. And if God isn't satisfied with that, well, that's God's problem. Well, I'm sure that we think this way from time to time. When we observe life, we see that those who sow good don't always reap what's good. So, what's the point of sowing good? The reward isn't always or immediately evident. And the little children killed in the Texas city of uh, Uvalde are a good example. What bad did they sow to cause them to reap death? They didn't do anything bad, yet they reaped the loss of their lives. That's not at all fair, is it? It's things like this that sometimes cause us to think, what's the point of sowing good if all we're going to do is reap bad in life. Well, as tragic and unfair as life is, it is accurate to say that we do reap what we sow. There's no denying that. What we sow is what we reap. In spiritual matters, we will certainly reap what we sow. You know, the temptation is to think, ah, that's not true. That's how we live sometimes. But the truth is, again, we reap what we sow. Verse 7 of our text makes this very plain. I think most of us are familiar with the parable of the rich man and Lazarus in the uh, Gospel of Luke. And during his life, the rich man thought only of himself. And he feasted, and he dined, he wore nice clothes. He ignored the, the poverty around him. This is what he sowed in life. This was all he cared about. And I'm sure he didn't think 
uh, about reaping what he had sown. Well, then one day, the rich man died, and he received or reaped what he had sown during his life on earth. He found himself in Hades, or hell, as Luke tells us. And from the description, it certainly sounds like it wasn't a place to be, a pleasant place to be. The rich man even himself said how horrible it was to be there. Well, he was told why he ended up there. It wasn't as if he had done nothing wrong, that he didn't deserve to be there. He was told that while he had lived on earth, he had received his good things. That was all he cared about while he lived here on earth. In other words, he sowed a desire to have riches. He sowed a lack of care for others. And he sowed a lack of belief in God Almighty. And for all this, he reaped eternal punishment. Now, I'm sure some will argue, well, that wasn't a real event. You know, it's, it's just a story to get people to do good. No need to worry about reaping what you sow in life. But we do need to think about what we sow is what we'll reap. And let's not get too smug in life where we're at now. No, we need to seriously think about what we sow in life. There are times when we think, well, we got it all in the bay. You know, we got this thing called life completely under control. We're real confident that we have nothing to worry about. What we're sowing in life right now is just fine. I wouldn't be so cocky or indifferent. We don't have it in the bay, especially if the Lord is out of the picture. If we're not sowing good seed for God's kingdom, then we can't expect to reap an eternal reward. And just being a good person in our own eyes is not sowing good seed. Sowing good in life is believing in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins and looking forward to the day when he will raise us from the dead to be with him forever. Sowing good in life, then, is responding to what Jesus has done for us on the cross with our lives dedicated to him, doing good in the world. That is sowing good in life. What will we reap if we sow this? Well, we will, re we will reap eternal life with Christ. If this is what we truly desire, we need to think about what we sow now. I would encourage us to make the best of this life that God has given us. Now, I'm not talking about living life to the fullest from the world's perspective. The world encourages us to think only of ourselves, to satisfy our earthly desires, no, I would encourage us to live as God intended us to live, namely for Him. And how does God intend us to live for Him? He wants us to do good in the world. And if we live for Him, just think how much freer we are. I know that may be hard for some people to understand, but it's true. The more we live for Jesus, the less we care about what is important to the world's way of thinking. For example, if I trust in the Lord's word that striving for worldly wealth is futile, I won't care if ever I become wealthy or not. I won't spend my entire life trying to achieve that worthless goal because living for the Lord is much, much more worthwhile. We have been freed from the way the world thinks because of what Jesus has done for us. I can give many more examples of how believing in Jesus Christ has liberated us, if we really think about it. Just think of, of 
all the stress that we sometimes have to deal with in this life, by focusing more on the Lord, we can reduce that. Sowing good for the Lord is extremely liberating. It frees us from the stress of going along with the ways of the world. Now, if we enjoy the ways of the world, we need to rethink what we're sowing in life. Now, if it's all about the here and now, don't expect to reap the prize of eternal life. Verse 7 of our text for the day gives us a, a lot to think about. It's not just more blah, blah, blah from the Word of God. They are words of life and wisdom for us. So let's embrace them with our whole heart. I hope our text for today has uh, woken us up. Maybe now we see that we can make some changes in our lives so that we better reflect being God's children. While we're still alive here on this earth, there's a lot for us to do. God still has a use for us. We're not done sowing for Him. That will happen when the Lord takes us home, but we're not there yet. So I pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to give us the power to be sowers of good in this world, and may He preserve us in the faith until that day when He finally calls us to our heavenly home. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all of our understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue our worship this morning by confessing our faith according to the Nicene Creed. Let us stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, Son of God, the God of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, He God did not made, being of us substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men, for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty Father, your kingdom has come near to us through the preaching of the word of Jesus. He alone gives us life and makes us your household, your family, where you dwell by your Holy Spirit. Enable us to receive your word with trusting hearts, knowing that the message we hear today is the living and active voice of Jesus. When you send out workers into your harvest field, O Lord, you equip them to proclaim the message of peace and salvation to all who would listen. Even when they face rejection, you remain faithful to them and strengthen them through your ongoing presence in their lives. We praise you for doing the same in our lives today, gracious Lord. Even as your church goes through the challenging times, remind us that your mission continues and your presence remains with us all. Merciful King, equip all pastors, teachers,
teachers, missionaries, and servants of your church to know your love and declare it boldly to those you have called them to serve. Bless the partnership of the gospel that is ours in the household of faith, that we may work together as brothers and sisters in Christ in the ventures you have prepared for us. Bless our ministry and mission here, that we may worship you in spirit and in truth, doing all that we can to proclaim your word in our community. Healing Lord, you give the pure medicine of your word and supper to bless and nourish the souls of those who trust in you. As we gather together at your altar today, we remember also those who are sick, homebound, hospitalized, and for other reasons, unable to join with us in person. Send your spirit to fill their hearts and homes with your perfect peace. Be with them that they may be restored by your mighty healing hand and ever praise you for your work in their lives. We thank you, O Lord, that you hear and heal. Answer and bless all those who call out to you for mercy. Sovereign God, you are exalted above all nations, rulers, and authorities on earth. Today, we pray for our nation as we celebrate the anniversary of our independence. Continue to bless our country and keep us mindful of your blessings. Raise up godly men and women who will serve among us and work for the common good. Place your hand upon all public servants and members of the armed forces that they may know your presence and provision in their lives. Almighty God, bless our native land, govern us by your grace, that we may experience your lasting peace. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend ourselves and all those for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May we see them. members come forward for Holy Communion, please be sure to fill out a communion registration card and hand it to the ushers. Gluten-free wafers are available. Please raise your index finger if needed. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely give to us and to all who belong to the household of faith. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into this world to bear our burdens 
and pay the penalty for our sins by his death upon the cross. Because he has now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, Satan is defeated and the peace of Jesus is offered to all who trust in him. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we love and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
forgiveness of all your sins. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for the forgiveness of all your sins.
stand in prayer? O oh God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this meal of mercy. We ask you not to forsake your children, but always to reign in our hearts and homes by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May our Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace.